welcome to another video from the CTAG clinic. My name is Dr. Mike Lloyd and I'm the clinic director. And today I wanted to do a video just looking at a very interesting new development in the diagnosis and classification of dissociative disorders, which is the new version of the SCID-D, which is the Structured Clinical Interview for Dissociative Disorders. And it's really important that this has happened because for 30 years we've basically been using the 1993-1994 version, which is this, which is this traditional SCID-D. And that is based on DSM-4 criteria. And this is looking at all psychiatric conditions, but it's under old criteria. So DSM-5 dropped some years ago, and we've been using DSM-4 criteria and upgrading it. And what's happened now is Marlene Steinberg has completed the latest version, which is the new SCID-D interview. So this is slightly different, and this is called the Semi-Structured Clinical Interview for Dissociative Symptoms and Disorders. So it's not just looking at the disorder element of things, which is quite controversial in many ways, but it's focusing a great deal on symptomology. So this is not just a diagnostical manual. The old SCID-D was very much about establishing the diagnosis using DSM criteria. The new SCID-D is about looking at diagnosis, symptomology, and therefore, most importantly, therapy. And what Marlene has done with the new SCID-D is actually put together an extremely comprehensive guide to understanding the nature of dissociation throughout, not just for the processes of diagnosis, but as an adjunct to therapy. So people that are undergoing therapy or therapists that are working with people dis with dissociation should really get hold of a copy of this. They're not very expensive. And you can use this as a process tool within therapy to help a much deeper and richer understanding of the way in which a person, person dissociates. On a diagnostical level, it's also very useful because it looks at both DSM-5 criteria and ICD-11 criteria, and that's the International Classification of Diseases from the World Health Organization, and that has a much greater series of updates about how we understand and classify dissociative conditions. So using this manual can actually lead to a diagnosis of using either the DSM or the ICD, and that's all fantastic. But I think actually the most important thing about this, and it is significantly bigger, so the first SCID deal is about 85 pages, this is double the size, but what it does do is it provides a huge amount of material from which two people in therapy can understand what's going on on a dissociative level. It helps the therapist, it helps the person sitting in the room, and the understanding of the internal system for say DID or OSDD, or the way in which amnesia, depersonalization, or derealization actually work themselves out in the here and now is fantastic. The type of questions are not massively different from the first SCID-D, it's just the richness and the depth, and it adds other features, so essential characteristics for both DSM and ICD, it looks at the severity rating scales, it gives profile details, it gives a great deal of information all in this one manual in a way that you used to have to work the instruction manual and the interviewer's guide at the same time. Now working with Marlene, I'm part of a, a small group that is going to be putting together some dedicated training courses. Uh, Marlene is working throughout America and Europe and enlisting the help of people to be able to work training towards this SCID-D and I'm going to be part of that and I'm extremely honoured and proud um, to be one of the UK representatives for this. So we will be rolling out some training courses for the SCID-D hopefully this year and certainly into next. In the meantime though I would encourage people to get hold of a copy of this and use it as part of a, a, a detailed understanding of how dissociation can present in the clinical framework. It can really help, help people understand what dissociation is taking place, when it's happening, trigger factors, and the absolute level of detail that is useful therapeutically for helping people get through this dissociation to the other side, wherever that might be for them. So this is an introduction really to how we're going to be working the SCID-D. What I'm going to do is update the diagnostic tool for SCID-D on our website, but for the meantime, it's just to let people know that this is now published, it exists, and it is definitely worth getting a copy of 
to promote better understanding of dissociation within clinical contexts. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave comments uh, as always and um, I'll be posting new content very soon. So in the meantime, please do take great care.